You don't get to say this anymore in 2023, but a couple of Strike Force and Ultimate Fighter vets going at it this weekend in the light heavyweight division, man. We have Zach Cummings, the lone hometown man, fighting out of his hometown of Kansas City, Missouri. Going to be taking on Short Fuse Ed Herman, a man who main evented a Strike Force show against eventual title challenger Tim Kennedy. So, Matt, when you look at this fight, I know a lot of people, if you're a UFC fan and you join kind of like after 2018, you probably don't really know about these two guys. But for Ed Herman and for Zach Cummings, a couple of ledges. And if you look at it for Herman, he came on the scene in the Ultimate Fighter 3, and he actually touched on an interview that he did with James Lynch not that long ago, where he said that he was actually supposed to be on the first season of the show, and then on the second season, he was going to go heavyweight, light heavyweight, and then ended up at middleweight. And he was able to go all the way to the finale. Like, Ed Herman, a pretty darn good fighter, didn't get the win over Ken O'Grove in the finale, but just like Forrest Griffin, Stefan Bonner, Dana White decided to sign Ed Herman anyway. He's been with the UFC ever since. He had one stint with uh, Strike Force after the no contest against Jake Shields, but he comes back, and Ed Herman, a company man through and through. But when you look at it for both these guys, Matt, I have a lot of points. I have a whole page of notes and a lot of tape study on it. Zach Cummings is coming off a near three-year layoff. He did an interview with Cole Shelton, the BJ Penn, last year, where in the headline it said he was bedridden for months because he had a really bad herniated disc. And he talked about it in an interview that he did with JHK and one that he did with James Lynch, that this very well could be the retirement fight. And for Ed Herman... I don't think Ed Herman's got 15 left. For Ed Herman in the interview he did with Lynch, and I'll mention the publications, I just got to make sure I go to them. Ed Herman said this is the last fight on his UFC contract. He'd like to fight a few more times, but this could be the end of the road for these two legends. They should be on the main event. So, or sorry, on the main card. On the main card. So let's get that Fight Night Picks momentum going. Let's get that charge going for Herman Cummins. Because I know I'm really excited about this fight. It's a good fight. I don't know if it has to be a main card fight. Like, Ed Herman... Show them the respect. This the, I'm just telling people what the, the truth is. That's what they come here for. Ed Herman is very slow at this stage of his career. And he was never cursed with speed, even when he was in his prime. But what Ed Herman can always rely on is, he is tougher than a $2 steak. He has extremely good cardio for a 42-year-old. He's like your uncle on Thanksgiving who wants to go outside and play football. And he's way better than all you guys because so, he had a heyday. No, no, no. We got to tell the story. So our no, uncle, our, our uncle had... had no, but he has some Zach Cummins in him, and he has some Ed Herman. He always had a bad back, and he could never move. And then all of a sudden, we said, okay, let's go throw the pigskin around. And he looked like his own legend, Emmett Smith, We've running just down the field. told this story 20 times. This is the thing about Ed Herman. We got to shoot him out. Got a finger blown off by an artesian well once, because a guy was trying to help him, or he was trying to learn something from the plumber who had come over, and unfortunately got a bad injury, but luckily he was able to get it fixed. The thing about Ed Herman, though, is... He could be slow. He can be slow with his striking, but his chin and his cardio will eventually break down a lot of his opponents to where they're just not the same version of themselves after those first couple big rushes. But Zach Cummins isn't some one hit or quitter with his power shots. And I know Cummins is an interesting fighter because he has good power. He has good hand speed. He has interesting submissions. He really is a very good well-rounded mixed martial artist. But like you said, with all this time off and with him really going to Ed Herman's weight class, not the other way around, because Herman has fought at middleweight. But when I think of Ed Herman, especially how big he is at this stage of his life. Ed Herman is a light heavyweight. He is a very big fighter. So I'll be interested to see how Zach Cummins does deal with some of the physicality of Ed Herman. But I don't think Herman's going to have the luxury that some of his past opponents have afforded him to where, hey, my opponent's going to punch himself out. I can kind of pace myself early and then expect to really take over late because I don't think Cummins is the type of opponent he'll be able to take advantage of that. Well, way. Cummins, again, is really interesting. And I might have made the mistake Cummins and Herman. But yeah, it was Cummins that fought Tim Kennedy over a strike force. Then two fights later, Kennedy was taking on Jacare Souza. But for Zach Cummins, He's invested himself in the exact same thing that Ed Herman's done. Ed Herman's opened a gym in the time away. It was an interview with MMA Sucker that Lynch had done. So he's opened a gym since. He's become more of a coach with Fabiano Scherner over at American Top Team Portland. And he started his own fight promotion with a couple of other guys. It's Cage Warriors Northwest. They just had a show. So that's really cool to see Ed Herman set himself up for retirement. Zach Cummings has done the same thing. And I know Cummings, a longtime associate, Glory MMA and Fitness. His gym is now called called Ignite Jiu-Jitsu and MMA Academy. But Cummins for this camp has gone over to Factory X Muay Thai. And he's had Mark Montoya in his coach in the past. But when you look at it, the guys that he's training with, okay, you have Julian Marcus. You have uh, Anthony Smith, Cody Brundage, the regular cast of characters that are around that gym. But he also threw out the names like Dustin Jacoby, who's on this card. Josh Fremd, who's going to work here a little bit like Ed Herman. And if you do consider it, Rob Wilkinson and then Olympic gold medalist Daniel Taylor for the wrestling. So Cummins has had one of those perfect camps, so it seems, for this one. But again, 
the back injuries. He's had this, he's had that. He started out at light heavyweight. Now he had one light heavyweight years and years ago, but he was primarily welterweight, then middleweight when he fought Trevin Giles, moved up in weight, dropped him in that fight at the end of it with a hook and then ended up submitting him by guillotine. Dropped Alessio Di Chirico in the last second of their fight where Mark Smith was like waving it off, but the fight wasn't actually over. Zach Cummings, as he's moved up in weight from 170 to 185, has kind of found the sweet spot in power in his last number of fights, but but he's been off for quite a while. And for Ed Herman, it's been weird because in his last five fights, it's capped by that Jean Vellante split decision. And you guessed it, Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Most people thought that Herman had won that fight. Who are these most people? He won three fights in a row, beats Cummins, beats Ibrahimov, and beats Mike Rodriguez. And Zach Cummins was actually supposed to take that Mike Rodriguez fight, but it didn't happen. But Ed Herman's last time out against Alonzo Menafield, he got beat pillar to post. In that I just... I- I'm not the biggest Zach Cummins guy at 205. I just think Ed Herman is going to struggle in this matchup for some of the reasons you have brought up. Herman walks forward. He does. Now, normally, he's an aggressive fighter in the way... Not like Lomachenko. Like, Lomachenko's aggressive to force you to fight outside of yourself. Ed Herman's aggressive to force you to just be really active. But the difference is, I think he's going to walk into a lot of those straight shots from a guy like Zach Cummins. And Cummins isn't a guy who throws from his hip trying to knock you out with every punch. His power is quite natural. And that's why a lot of these knockdowns do, I think, come near the end of fights. Because not that he isn't tired, because of course he's tired too. But he's still very much the same fighter he is in the first round as he is in the third round. It's just he falls off a little bit, not like 50%. I just think stylistically for Herman, this is a very difficult one for him to be at at 42 years old because he's fighting a guy who has very good accuracy with his hands, who can fight on the back foot, who has good takedown defense. And again, I just think the accuracy from Cummins is going to be a big part in this fight. We'll have to see how the injuries play a factor for Zach Cummins. This would be a no play for me based on the inactivity, the injuries, the retirement talk for both guys. And for Zach Cummins, the first fight at light heavyweight since he fought for an MFC light heavyweight title against St. John, New Brunswick, Canada's own Ryan Jimmo. So rest in peace to Ryan Jimmo. But Zach Cummins making that move back up. He was 6-3 at middleweight in the UFC, 3-1 at light heavy, or sorry, 6-3 at welterweight, 3-1 at middleweight. So we'll see how he makes out at light heavyweight. Both guys BJJ black belt. Zach Cummins got that second degree notch on his. He is a pretty big favorite in the matchup. We have a look at the topology votes. I'm going to say over under 73. 5% 5% Zach Cummins in the match. I thought it was going to be 85 Cummins, so I'll say over. Uh, it's under. So 744 total votes, 79% Cummins, 79% by decision. For the 21% that I have Herman, 69% by decision. And I think Ed Herman's got pretty good volume numbers in the UFC. And I know, again, think about this. But that's going to go back it, 15 years. Put it this way. Ed Herman was on the same season of The Ultimate Fighter as Hollywood's Tate Fletcher Matt Hamill and Michael Bisbing. And Herman was on team Shamrock. Ken Shamrock. Like, it's wild how long both of these guys, but Ed Herman in particular, has been around with the UFC. I just think Cummins might have a speed advantage. I think even moving up to light heavyweight, even where the age is at, Cummins has those. And even when Cummins gets himself into bad positions and he's on his back, you never want to see a guy play jiu-jitsu at light heavyweight. But I think Cummins has most of the advantages in this fight. So I'll go with him here. I think uh, Zach Cummins stylistically, not that he's a nightmare for Ed Herman, but he does offer a counter to a lot of what Herman does well. Herman's a guy who can really take advantage of your cardio deficiencies. Zach Cummins doesn't really have those. He can go for a lot of takedowns. What I do like out of Cummins is he can threaten with the guillotine too when guys do go for that offensive takedown. So I think that could be a decent part of this fight if we do see Herman get a little bit uncomfortable on the feet and start to shoot for his own takedowns. But I do agree with you. I have Zach Cummins. Both of us going with the returning, possibly retiring Zach Cummins. Let us know down below in the comment section who you have. Some big time matchups on this fight card. Matt, including Holloway versus Allen. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's get, get into 